Hey, I'm Chris and I live in Las Vegas and I'm kind of a gearhead. Now, last time I did one of these videos, I did sound editing for the Casio CZ1000. <sighs> Sad to say, I bumbled it. I was talking all over myself in that video and the funny thing is, is I did like three different takes on that video. <laughs> Now, the only reason I'm doing this one is because Espen Craft is about to do his video on the Casio CZ1000. Espen Craft has an awesome channel. Oh my gosh, he edits, he edits, he edits patches with such incredible ease. Um, I love his channel, I love his music. Check out Espen Craft. So, even though mine is never going to be as good as Espen Craft, I love and appreciate all of these synthesizers. I wanted to do a quick overview on the three different synthesizers that I have. Um, analog to FM to ah, phase distortion. We're going to start with the analog. Right now, in front of me, I've got... This is the Behringer MS-1. This is a clone of the Roland... Whew, the Roland um, SH-101. Basically, analog synthesizer, total clone um, of the original. Um, we're going to listen to uh, the differences between the sounds of uh, these three different kinds of synthesizers. Now, this is an awesome bass line. An example of uh, the sound, the thick resonance that you get out of an analog synthesizer. Let's try that again. Set this guy up. Now you'll hear how thick and how round that sounds. Um, analog synthesizers, how does the technology work? Basically, you have a voltage, you have an oscillator, you have, a, you have voltage, you have an oscillator, you have a filter, and you have an amplifier, and you basically turn all these funny dubby knobs and slides to make your sound. Um, with these three different synthesizers, these three different synthesizers, I've tried to catch a bass sound so you can hear a bass sound in all three of these different synthesizers and yet hear the difference and hear the similarities. Um, basically, we're listening to the three different bass sounds, all made from different kinds of technology. Technology. This one, analog. This one, analog technology. Second one, the Yamaha DX100. This is FM synthesis. What is FM synthesis? Well, ooh, I'm blinking. I need to do this really quickly. <laughs> FM synthesis is basically, they wanted to make all their sounds not from uh, uh, voltage oscillators. They were doing it all digitally. And so this is basically, instead of transistors, instead of oscillators, this is microchips and capacitors basically on the inside. All of these are the different algorithms that are on this unit. I believe that the um, DX7 had over 20 different algorithms. I'm not sure what is this, eight, two, four, six, eight. Um, here is a bass sound. Oh, here, let's get a sound. Let's get a listen of the sound of a thick bass out of the DX100. Now, yeah, you can still hear a thick resonance out of it, but at the same time, as you can hear that it's digital, it's cleaner, it's not as heavy or dirty or filled with resonance, um, which is actually all the cool things that I love about uh, analog synthesizers. Not just the, uh, the switches and the knobs and such, but um, just the straight, the, the straight dirtiness of it that you're supposed to clean up. That's the whole point of a filter is you're supposed to uh, do subtractive synthesis. You're supposed to take out what you don't like out of that patch to smooth it out or to make it fatter if you want to. 
Um, the FM, uh, FM synthesis is completely different. Actually, it's making it sound out of operators and then you're filtering that through algorithms. <laughs> it's all digital, dude. Now, what we have right here is what I just reviewed. is a Casio CZ1000. I also have a bass sound in it. It is Casio's take on Yamaha's FM synthesis. Basically, Casio wanted to copy and cash in on the popularity of Yamaha's DX series, so they made their own series called the, uh, the, CZ, uh, the CZ series. But basically how it works is they take a, a cosine or sine wave and they manipulate it through a distortion in order to make it sound like anything they like. Let's listen to a bass line here. Ooh, hold on. Bass line. Let's change that waveform really fast. Let's see how this sounds. Ooh, I love that. Again, there's thickness, there's fatness, there's resonance in it. It is manipulating, um, it's manipulating the, the cosine in order to make it, uh, or the sine wave in order to make it a cosine um, through distortion. Much like this is using algorithms in order to manipulate uh, the, the digital uh, operator. Um, but it's basically Casio's take on this, this series. Um, they sound pretty damn similar, I'll tell you that. And they're both manipulatable um, in a variety of ways that are similar that are not different. Um, basically, two really, really awesome guitars. Um, the same take on, a different take on the same concept, basically. Now, do I have a favorite? Honestly, um, I couldn't even choose, dude. I like them all, man. Um, it really just basically comes down to how many steps do you want to put into doing your sound editing. Um, this one, doo -doo 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 -doo, let's go back into... Uh, um, the cool thing about the 80s is they put all of the directions on their editing on top of the... Uh, the keyboard itself so basically each and every like function that you want to do as far as editing your patch editing your sound um it's you could all do it on the top of your control panel um the same deal with this with the casio cz 1000 you've got um basically <laughs> outrageously six different envelopes to, to work on on two different digital oscillators and you have a detune that you can mess around with and you have your 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 octave and weird vibrato that you can mess around with and you could change around your different waves of, on your wave platform so basically dude if you want to do some really really complicated sound editing this is possible in this guy um more so in the DX7. I hear the DX7 and it's almost impossible to program fully, like understand the damn thing fully. But the DX100 was basically a nice little Kickstarter for me to get into uh, FM synthesis and play around with it. Now, um, as far as the old school, old fashioned uh, analog synthesis, dude, <sighs> This guy was way more trouble for me to learn from than I ever thought, man. Um, it looks complicated. You have to just understand it's not as complicated as it looks. That's your sound source. That's your filtering. That's how loud, soft you want it to be. And then, you, you know, you mix around with your timing right there. Um, it's not that hard. Uh, it just play. It, it just takes a lot of practice, a lot of pressing buttons and turning knobs, saying I like this, I don't like this. Ooh, wow, that's what this does. Um, but that's the coolness of that synthesizer. As far as my studio this year goes, um, 
We took down Christmas and my sweetheart wanted to make more room for a gym. And um, he took the piano out of our living room and put it in a spare bedroom. And then I built the rest of my keyboards around the digital piano. So um, I'm so, so happy to be with you guys and to have new subscribers. And I'm super, 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 super thankful. Um, I only make these videos on my days off. I really don't do them while I'm working. I deliver pizza in, in Las Vegas. And when I'm not delivering pizza, I try to play music. I try to exercise and work out and have a happy, fun um, outlook on life. Um, I believe that music and art heals. I believe that um, people need each other. And if you're out there and you see somebody who uh, is in need, that you should, uh, if, you're in, if you have the means to reach out and do your best to help them. Um, I might play a song for you guys because I'm so happy. <clears throat> Now I do have uh, one or two keytars where you can't manipulate the their patches um, just on the keytar itself, like the Korg RK100S. If you hook this up via the USB onto a laptop, you could totally manipulate the sounds. You could totally change the patches. But can you change the patches just like, let's say you're on the stage and you want to change the patches in real time? You cannot do that. Um, all of these, even though they are 1980s technology, in real time, you can manipulate the sounds of each and every patch that you have on, um, on those keytars. That's why I really love them. Um, you can get into sound manipulation. You can get into sound editing and, vo editing and voicing if you wanted to. Um, if you're really, really high tech like that. Um, with this guy, it's really just meant to be played on the stage like a guitar. Um, so that brings me to a different stage that I was going, going, going to go into next time when I do one of my videos is as trendy as it is and as many videos as I've seen, more and more synthesizer players are using these guys, not just the Behringer ones, but they're using guitar pedals on their synthesizers. And since I'm a guitar player, I decided to give it a try. I saw um, Pink and the Guitar Cat was doing a video on using a loop, loop pedals in order to make your synthesizers, um, to make your guitar, uh, to make your guitar songs actually sound fuller and fatter and uh, to do multiple uh, lines of music off of one guitar, which is kind of awesome. But my emphasis on uh, using these guys is what if you have a keytar that you can't manipulate the sounds in real time or you have a synthesizer basically that has limited uh, editing uh, capabilities. Well, you can use one of these guys to do that. So um, I'm gonna play <laughs> the uh, Korg RK100S with these guys when I get more of them coming in the mail. Um, also, I've got one or two Vocas that I'm, I'm looking for, that I'm waiting for, 
that I will show you guys when they show up in the mail as well. I hope everybody is being happy and well and healthy and washing their hands and looking after one another and uh, wearing masks and just darn it, being good human beings. Um, love, health, happiness from Las Vegas. Um, I'm Chris. I believe that uh, music heals, art heals.